The intersection of Route 295, Interstate 76, and Route 42 in Camden County, New Jersey, has been the source of serious traffic issues for many years. Recognizing that confusing traffic patterns and congested roadways have been problematic throughout this heavily traveled corridor, the New Jersey Department of Transportation is setting out to alleviate these issues, kicking off a project that will create a new, improved, and safer intersection. The New Jersey Department of Transportation is tackling the task of improving this troublesome stretch of roadway while remaining mindful of the surrounding local communities. This project area requires engineers and the project team to consider various sensitivities, including environmental constraints, cultural and historical resources, and residential communities, all of which would involve years of studies to properly plan for and design around. Trying to fix a flawed interchange that's squeezed in by wetlands, special housing, churches, a cemetery, and used by nearly a quarter of a million vehicles a day. That's a lot to deal with and part of the reason why it's taken a decade to move the project this far. In December of 2001, the New Jersey Department of Transportation began the process with a blank slate. Initially, staff members identified the specific purpose and need of the project, pinpointing exactly why the roadway was deficient and what needed to be improved in order to develop the safest, most efficient, and sensible design possible to optimize traveling conditions for motorists. The project is a really an interchange improvement project. Basically what's missing today is that there is not a direct connection carrying 295 northbound or 295 southbound through the interchange. The, each of the roadways basically go to a ramp network at the interchange and connect into Route 42 or into uh, I-76. And the proposed project basically will maintain the six-lane roadway, three lanes both northbound and southbound, directly through the interchange, and then maintain all the other ramp movements to the other roadways. In 2002, the New Jersey Department of Transportation produced the technical document entitled The Statement of Purpose and Need, which summed up the reasons for and goals of the project based on their extensive research. This document cited that the purpose of this project is to improve traffic safety, reduce traffic congestion, and meet drivers' expectations by improving the direct connection of I-295 mainline and the interchange of Interstate 295, Interstate 76, and New Jersey Route 42. There's a lot of uh, accidents and uh, traffic congestion out there. Uh, this interchange is like one of the Either it's definitely uh, the worst interchange in South Jersey and probably definitely within the top three of the worst interchanges in New Jersey as far as traffic congestion, accident history. Like I said, it was a big push to finally get this project moving and get it constructed so we can improve the quality of life of a lot of folks down there. The 14 bridges in the project area have varying degrees of issues, ranging from classification as functionally obsolete to structurally deficient. Building a safe roadway is of utmost importance to the New Jersey Department of Transportation and well within the department's capabilities. Their goal and challenge would be to design, build, and maintain a safe, improved roadway which would benefit the motoring public and the local community while minimizing any potentially negative impacts along the way. In order to begin their research on the many considerations this project would require, the New Jersey Department of Transportation selected the engineering and professional services firm, Dewberry, to perform a feasibility study. The feasibility study would provide detailed information on the project area that would be a critical resource to engineers developing design alternatives for the project. This study examined several key areas that could potentially be impacted by designing and constructing an improved roadway. Their study of historical resources began with researching the settlements and communities that existed in the area dating back to Native American communities that inhabited similar locations nearby. Further research indicates that once European settlers arrived in New Jersey, this acted as a preferred location to establish communities, with properties along the corridor dating back to the 1600s. 
Prior to the advent of motor vehicles as the main form of transportation, the Grenlock branch of the Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Line took residents from here to the Jersey Shore during the summer season. Another interesting challenge is a series of barrack-style housing near the existing roadway that was built during World War II to house local factory workers. The defense project is long gone, but the housing development remains. This defense facility is partly to blame for the unusual geometry of Route 295, as the roadway was built in order to avoid disturbing the facility before ending on Interstate 76. Environmental challenges also have the potential to affect the new design significantly. The nearby freshwater wetlands of Big Timber Creek and Little Timber Creek will be assessed and monitored closely to collect data on the existing ecosystem. There's a large uh, area of uh, wetlands that's kind of a little oasis, shall I say, in this area, this highly urbanized uh, area. Um, highly developed and uh, along Little Timber Creek there's a large natural area remaining, floodplain area, and we want to do the best we could to preserve that and in fact as part of the project we'll be able to enhance that. Environmental studies are not however limited to impacts to the ecosystem and natural resources, but rather must take into account impacts to the residents of surrounding communities. This includes a variety of concerns, ranging from economic impacts like maintaining access to local business to sensitive community issues like noise pollution or maintaining certain local aesthetics. To this end, in 2002, Dewberry worked to conduct the necessary public outreach to keep the affected communities involved in the project progress. Community involvement is very important. It's important because Without the person reaching out to the public, you're never going to find out what the public wants. When any meetings were coming up, we worked with the municipalities of Belmar, Mount Ephraim, and Gloucester City. We announced it in the proper, appropriate way. It made you feel good because we knew we had gotten the message out there. The public was involved in the process as public meetings took place throughout the seven years this study and evaluation process took place. Each discussion moved the design closer and closer to developing a preferred alternative that would not only satisfy the project's purpose and needs statement, but would also be well received by local residents and stakeholders. The concern we had to overcome with the community was just that, that we have developed an alternative even before we first approached them, that we knew what we were going to build. And once we were able to um, sit down with them and show them, you know, a blank slate uh, and then starting to get involved in the process, listen to their suggestions and consider them and, and give them feedback on every one of their suggestions. I think that they realize that this is real, that, that we are working together, that this is a project where the community has a voice and this voice will be heard and it will make a difference in the final solution. Over the next several years, over 20 alternatives were developed and discussed. One of the biggest challenges during this design process was to develop realistic, appropriate, well thought out designs. This is where feasibility comes into play. A good example of this can be seen when examining one alternative proposed during the design process which included bridges at three different elevations. In order to make sure every potential impact was taken into consideration, engineers even went as far as to float balloons at the proposed heights of the bridges in the design to judge the environmental impact it would have on the aesthetics and scenery of the surrounding community. One by one, the impacts to the surrounding communities and the environment were weighed and compared. By 2004, the project team had narrowed it down to a short list of five possible design alternatives. Upon selecting these potential designs, the project transitioned into its next phase. The New Jersey Department of Transportation required the project team to provide them with an extremely comprehensive technical document called the Environmental Impact Statement. Engineers gathered data on traffic to analyze existing roadway conditions, as well as formulate future projections on traffic conditions and volumes for the year 2030. The data collected indicated how constructing each of the four design alternatives would impact traffic conditions. 
Engineers also developed a set of determining criteria to evaluate the impacts that each design would have on its surroundings, such as air quality, right-of-way, and noise pollution. They would then take this data and compare it to existing conditions in the project area. In addition, natural ecosystems are examined and plants and animals within the habitat are identified and documented. These conditions will be monitored and re-evaluated continuously throughout the final design and construction phases of the project to ensure environmental conditions are being maintained. Archaeological investigation and architectural resource assessment were done to identify and record all significant cultural and historic resources in the project area. Upon examining all the data collected in the Environmental Impact Statement, the New Jersey Department of Transportation, in collaboration with environmental agencies, residents, stakeholders, and community groups, selected Alternative D as the initially preferred alternative. Alternative D begins in the vicinity of the Grenlock Secondary Railroad Bridge over I-295. Mainline I-295 shifts slightly south and elevates to a third-level viaduct over Browning Road and Route 42, and a second-level viaduct over Ramp C. The roadway meets existing I-295 pavement north of the Creek Road overpass. The I-295 Alternative D alignment crosses I-76 Route 42 at a skew through an unused area of New St. Mary Cemetery. At long last, the project begins to take shape. The design team re-evaluates the findings of the environmental impact statement and work to secure the permits that would be necessary to construct the selected alternative, including environmental permits and access permits. The project team is focused on acquiring the right-of-way that would be required for all construction activities. With the design phase complete, preparations begin to transition the project into construction, bringing the state one step closer to making the direct connect a reality.